guys, welcome to today's video and welcome on into my beauty stash as promised. Today we are doing the 10 worst palettes that have found their way into my stash in 2023. Unfortunately, some of my favorite brands made this list today and you know, it is how it is, you know, not everything can be a winner and not everything can work for anybody so no offense if some of your favorites are actually on this list it is just how they ranked and how they performed i looked at everything i looked at price packaging formula color story you name it customer service even um so yeah these palettes unfortunately just did not do it for me this year and hopefully none of your favorites made this list if it is your first time here on my channel i just want to say hello and welcome to all of you my name is steph i love trying out new makeup i am primarily a new makeup review channel but i do multiple looks with eyeshadow palettes makeup ranking videos get ready with me style of videos if that sounds great to you i want to invite you to become part of our makeup family do me a favor click on that subscribe button and hit the bell next to it that way you'll be notified every time I do drop a new video and if you're a fan of makeup ranking videos or you just want to see what made my worst of 2023 as far as eyeshadow palettes go please give this video a big thumbs up before you go I did film this look you guys should see this look go up probably the same day you're watching this video it'll go up as a YouTube short and it will also go up as an Instagram reel. But uh, I don't think I'm gonna list or link any of these products or these palettes in today's video because why would you wanna purchase them if they didn't perform well? But I will link the makeup that I have on and some of those links might be affiliate links. So if you do end up shopping through them, I thank you so, so much for supporting me on my channel. Let's dive on into it, guys. Y'all wanna see and hear my thoughts on all about the worst palettes of 2023, according to me. Keep on watching. So coming in at number 10 is the ABH Cosmos palette. And this formula, this new formula that's supposed to be new and improved for ABH is just not been working for me. And it has been working for me like all this year and last year. What works for me from ABH is the Norvina palettes, the larger scale ones. I love that formula, but whatever this new formula is, is just not doing it for me. And this Cosmos, look at this. This is Cosmos palette. So this is the first one that I received. It came broken, sent them the pictures. They sent me a new one. They didn't offer me a refund. They said, we will send you a new one. So I said, fine. They sent me a new one. It stayed, it was broken as well. So once they sent me two broken palettes, I requested a refund. They did give me the refund. I gave the other palette. They didn't even want the palette back at that. I gave the other palette to one of my friends and I stayed with this one only because I knew it was definitely gonna be making one of my worst lists for 2023. The formula for me, guys, it's the formula, it's the mattes. They just turn out looking muddy on my complexion and I don't think the shimmers are all that. To be honest, I actually liked the older ABH formula more than I like this new formula the packaging on it is cute but what's inside is not really been working for me lately and for the cost of the palette I think it's what $52 some somewhere around there I mean you want to get your money's worth out of that and two broken palettes not to mention a lot of you told me that your palettes came broken as well there is clearly a production issue with that particular shadow because it seems that everybody's light blue shadow was coming broken um i hope they got to fix it i hope your palette did not come broken and i hope if you really want this palette you're able to find it at TJ Maxx at a fraction of its original cost. Coming in at number nine, unfortunately, we have the Elf and American Eagle collaboration. I thought this was such a cute collection. The entire collection, really cute. Unfortunately, the eyeshadow palette, while it looks pretty because I am a huge fan of blue and brown together, I think it is a gorgeous color combination. This palette was just lackluster. Some of these shimmer shadows, I mean, they didn't even show up, not even with a damp brush. I would say the mattes performed much better than the shimmers did, but I was really looking forward to like this marbled shimmer shadow there, but yeah, this was kind of a letdown. I think the best thing out of this collection was the lip balm, which I still use. I have it up here on my filming desk. And also the denim makeup bag, which you could only get if you purchase the entire collection. And it was kind of pricey for the entire collection. I mean, pricey by e.l.f. standards, right? 
but um, I get it. It's a collab. I think the whole packaging, though, is really cute. It even has a little tag, like if it was an actual, you know, um, pair of jeans and stuff. I think it was a great idea. I think the collab made sense. Unfortunately, what's inside the palette did not make sense. That's why it's finding itself in the number nine spot. Coming in at number eight, unfortunately, is from one of my favorite indie brands. And I just could not get this to work for me, guys. And this is more of like a multi-purpose palette. It's not necessarily an eyeshadow palette, but you can use it on your eyes. I tried it multiple different ways, but I just... I cannot unfortunately get the Adept Cosmetics Ketracel White Palette to work for me. Love the packaging. It's like the faux leather packaging. Adept always makes beautiful packaging for their palettes. These are two cream highlighters, or you can use them as eyeshadow, whatever you want. It's a multi-purpose palette. And then these are their rainbow. You can see it's just all flaking. It's just... I've had... I've struggled so much with this palette. So much so that I don't really reach for it anymore, but... I see on Instagram where they swatch this palette out so beautifully and they get all the rainbow shades like in there to show up. I am not the master swatcher. I am amateur hour when it comes to swatches. I just could not make this look good. I liked the cream shadows. I think they were beautiful as highlighters. These were my favorite out of the four, but this was a pretty pricey palette. This was like 50 some odd dollars. For the four pans, granted you get like four shades, five shades in each pan there, but I mean, are you really going to take the time to go one by one to dip in your brush into each little row there? I don't know. For me, this just didn't really make sense. That's why it's finding itself in the number eight spot. Coming in at number seven, unfortunately, is from an indie brand. That was my first time trying them and most likely my last time because I haven't picked up anything since. And this was a from Salem Cosmetics and Smink. This was their collab palette. I think the cover art is really cute. They did a really nice job. This is the Forest Heart palette. So my palette came broken. I had a couple of broken shadows in here. And when I reached out to customer service, they sh showed me or they told me that they would show me just how to repress them. And I paid a pretty penny for this palette. It wasn't a cheap palette by any means. It was 50, 60 some odd bucks. And um, I just, I was just left really disappointed by my customer service experience and also by the performance of the palette. I thought that some of the matte shades were a little patchy. They weren't that easy to work with. And it was just kind of off-putting from the start. I was really excited. Um, Smink creates some beautiful, beautiful looks over on Instagram. But Salem Cosmetics, I just, I have yet to try anything else. I don't think I'm going to. I don't know. If something really catches my eye, I will. But I was just you know, really left disappointed by the performance of the palette and then the the customer service to top it off with. So yeah, unfortunately, Forest Heart didn't work out for me. If it's working out for you, great. Coming in at number six is from the drugstore and that is Profusion. I like a lot of what Profusion does. I think Profusion is one of those brands that when they get it right, they're great because they're at an excellent price point. But when they get it wrong, it shows the price point. And this to me was the entire collection was a little bit lackluster for me. This is the Free Spirit palette. It is a 25 pound palette. Just, I think, too many shades, a little excessive, maybe a little bit redundant. Primarily pastels. I am not the biggest fan of pastel shadows. Um, you do get a pressed glitter in here. I just wasn't really feeling this palette from the way it performed, even to the way it swatched out. Like, uh, I don't know. I've definitely tried better from Profusion. The cream blushes that accompany, no, were they cream or powder? The blushes that accompany this collection, they weren't much to talk about either. So I feel like this entire collection was a bit of a letdown. And that's why it's finding itself on my worst of 2023 list. Coming in at number five are palettes that I think are good. Like, I think it's a good formula. And I think the packaging is beautiful. But for what they are priced, 
I don't think you need these. And these are the House Labs Volumes 1 and 2, the Super Neutrals palette. So House Labs obviously is owned by Lady Gaga. When I think of Lady Gaga, I think vibrant, colorful, unique, outside of the box, creative. I don't think that these palettes represent that. This is the more colorful palette of the two. While I think it's a nice formula, each palette is $49. I paid $49 for each one, bought these myself from Sephora. They're not much to talk about. Like they're average, they're nothing spectacular. These are traditional shimmer shadows. I mean, six shadows for $49. I would much rather get a Natasha Denona palette, a mini one at $27 for five shades. I know the quality on those is great. They also have really cute color stories. These are just pretty basic, pretty neutral. I don't think you need to spend $49 on these. I saw that they did go on sale shortly after they were released. I think they went on sale for like 30 some odd dollars, which is great. But if you can get these half off somewhere, you know, for 25 bucks, I can see 25 bucks. Packaging is really nice, but I definitely don't see $49 with these. And that's why they're on my worst list of 2023. Coming in at number four, one of my favorite indie brands, and I was sent this one in PR, talking about the Two Up palette from Lethal Cosmetics. So somebody said that they used a different lab to do this palette with, and it shows because what is inside did not perform great at all. From the shimmers to the mattes, there's a sequin shade in there. No, this palette just was so off from the other palettes that I've tried from them. Lethal Cosmetics is a brand that I've seen improving with each palette, but they took a huge step back with this two up palette. There's just so much wasted space in here. I liked how the other one was the one up palette was shaped as a video game. This one is kind of not really shaped. It's more just rectangular. Um, and then with all the wasted space, I think, I don't think this was well thought out. I don't think it was well executed and the formula is definitely not the amazing Lethal Cosmetics formula that we have come to love over the years. Coming in at number three, unfortunately, is from one of my favorite drugstore brands, and that comes to us from LA Girl. These are their four play palettes. So, you know, a couple of them were all right. This is the Seduce palette. I would say this one performed really well, but I mean, it's nothing to get excited about. I actually think Wet n Wild does a better job when it comes to like these four, or they have five pan palettes and they're about the same price as well. This next one, if I can get it open, this one is called the Juicy Palette. This one was okay too. The one I was really looking forward to was this last one over here. This one is called Cowgirl. And this is the one that disappointed me the most. And while LA Girl makes a lot of my favorite things, you guys know I love LA Girl eyeliners. I love their setting spray, foundation. I just, I really think they missed the mark with these four play palettes. And that's why they're finding themselves in the number three spot. Now coming in at number two is the Too Faced Cosmic Crush palette. Cardboard packaging, which doesn't bother me. That's okay that it's in cardboard packaging. But these palettes have definitely gone up in price because they are well over the $50 price point. I don't remember exactly how much this one was. I think this color story is really pretty. I like this color story, but this is a hit or miss palette. Some days it works, some days it doesn't. Some of the shadows works work some of them don't i've had this for a few months already and some of the shades are already hard panned and i keep this closed it's not like i have it open laying around it is properly stored and yeah i just you know i said this during my review of their maple syrup pancakes palette i think i'm gonna just go ahead and stop reviewing these two face palettes i might just do their fall release and leave it at that, but I've been consistently disappointed with them for quite some time. It's just, you know, it's the lackluster formula. Like the mattes perform well, but the shimmers can be duds and they can get hard pan really fast. And for what you pay for it, you know, if you're getting it full price, like I am, I'm gonna get it full price because I obviously wanna try it for you guys. 
Um, it's just really, it's not worth it. It is just money down the drain. I think if you really like this and you're still a big fan of the brand, which I don't blame you because Too Faced does make some pretty good complexion products. Like I'll give them that, but it's their eyeshadow formula that needs some work. But if you really want this palette, I'm sure it's already at TJ Maxx or Ross. Look for it there and get it at half off. And finally, coming in at number one, another Too Faced palette, and this is the Italian Spritz palette. I didn't expect this palette to be at the bottom. I kind of thought it would make my worst list, but I didn't think it was going to be number one. And the reason why I'm putting it, it, it in the number one spot is because when I bought this palette, obviously I bought it as soon as it came out. It is in that tin packaging. I love the cover art. I think it is so cute. I love the color story. I think this is really colorful by uh, Too Faced standards. It got hard pan within the month. Like I went back to use it again. I was working or I created an Instagram reel and I really had to fight for those shimmer shadows that I use. So, you know, again, it's just money wasted. This was like $54, something like that. While it's in the tin packaging and all of, you know, the color story is really cute. This was released in the spring. I think it's a great spring summer color story. What's inside just doesn't perform. And I don't understand a brand that has all of the resources, all of the money in the world. They are owned by Estee Lauder, a huge corporation. You would think that they would be working to improve their shadow formula. Um, Estee Lauder makes some amazing foundations and Too Faced makes really nice complexion products. And I've seen improvements in that those areas but I just haven't haven't seen it yet in the eyeshadow palette formula. So I hope that if you buy or you, you bought any of these um, Too Faced palettes that you definitely got them on sale or you got them over there like on TJ, at TJ Maxx or Marshalls or Ross and stuff because they're definitely not worth the 50 some odd dollar price tag. And it's unfortunate because this is a brand that I kind of just grew up on and when they were owned by Jeremy and Jared, I thought that they took more risks, but that, you know, they were more fun. I thought the shadows performed really well. And now that they're, they've been sold to Estee Lauder, I feel like there's a decline in the quality of shadows. They're just, it feels like they're stuck like in the early 2000s, mid 2000s, and they just haven't improved since and the color stories are becoming kind of redundant. I don't mind that they're neutral with fun pops of color. I think that sells better, especially when you're selling like at Sephora or Ulta, but to not improve your formula over that number of years, yeah, that that's not gonna work, especially with those of us who love our indie brands. I mean, for less than the price of one of these Too Faced palettes, you can get a really awesome indie brand eyeshadow palettes that has specialty shadows like multi-chromes and duochromes that are going to perform 10 times better than these Too Faced palettes ever will. So guys, those are my 10 worst palettes of 2023. I hope that none, none of your favorite made my list, but no offense. Again, not everything can work the same for everyone. What I don't like, some of you may love and vice versa. I'm just here to talk about makeup, to have fun talking about makeup, and I hope you are here for the same reason. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. What were some of your worst of 2023? And definitely stay tuned because I'm actually getting ready to film my best palettes of 2023 right after this video. So that will be up probably sometime in the coming days. I want to thank you guys so much for watching another one of my videos. Y'all have a great day or night wherever it is y'all are at. Stay hydrated, drink that water, and I'm going to see you all very soon. Bye.